If you're anything like me, you might have recently been struggling to keep basic Calerpa alive. It might sound odd because Calerpa is pretty easy to keep alive and normally you just stick it in a tank and away it goes. But in the last six months or so, I've been having never ending issues with my Calerpas just constantly going sexual. And if you don't know what that means, it's basically where the Calerpa just decides to go completely transparent, release all of its gooey insides into the water column and then dissolve. Now I've recently taken up a posting at a prestigious university and their ways of working changed the way that I approached this issue. And funnily enough, it coincided with the same time of me setting up this tank. Now I have had this tank set up for a long time, the same amount of time as the rest of this system in fact, but I changed the contents before this had a mishmash of different macrowies, including Cheeto, Alva, and a few different things. But I decided, let's try and solve this Calerpa going sexual issue. So in here, it's still maturing and there's a lot of dirt in there. But in here, we've got a plant substrate. This is Manado by a company called JBL. I'm using this because it is full of nutrients, specifically iron, which I know green macroalgae really likes. And this was all going really well. I added lots of prolifera in here. As you can see, there's a fair bit in here now. But one day, it all just went sexual and did the thing that I was trying to avoid. And this got me thinking that surely some clever person has studied the reproduction of Calerpa. And actually there, there wasn't much um, to go on to be honest, it's not very well understood mechanism. But there was one paper that I found, and if I can find it again I'll link it in the description. And this clever bod went out and basically measured the C to see the flow, the light, the salinity, all of the different variables but also collected some macroalgae, some calerpa. It wasn't prolifera, which is here, and it wasn't taxifolia, which was the other one I've shown you. I think it was race mosa. And basically, what they were looking for is what is the trigger for calerpa to go sexual? Because surely there must be some mechanism which creates the need or desire for this macroalgae to sort of release all of its gametes. Now if you Google why Calerpa goes sexual or go on forums and read people's opinions on the matter, what they will come up with is they run out of nutrients or they're overcrowded or all of these sort of unsubstantiated claims that people have come up with. And what's interesting is this scientist doing this study came up with two variables which you probably wouldn't have thought of. So during their study, what they did is they got lots of different tanks, put Calerpa in it, put different lighting over it, and also change the flow and temperature. Because if you remember, this stuff lives in the wild. So in the wild, things change. Temperature changes, we have seasons, there's different lights, the sun goes up and down at different times, so on and so forth. So what did they find? They found that that specific species of Calerpa reacted to flow and also reacted to temperature changes. So let me get to the point now. Basically, if you have the right combination of low flow and high temperature, this causes an increase of your Calerpa going sexual. And I've tested that in this tank. What I did is I turned my temperature down to around 22 degrees and I increased the flow by adding this powerful power head. Now since then, I've had a lot less incidents of my Calerpa going sexual, and I've actually got a lot better growth. We can see all of the lovely new fronds appearing on this Calerpa. Now of course, I do other things like keep the nutrients available and I also keep the tank parameters as stable as possible. But the researcher actually found out that there wasn't really much correlation between nutrient availability to the Calerpas going sexual. So I think actually that's been scientifically backed, maybe not proven 
to not really be a factor in why your calerpa is going sexual. And it's an unfortunate fact that the temperature range that we like to keep our reef tanks at, 25 to 26, is actually the temperature range which triggers a lot of calerpas to go sexual. And then if you put them into a sump with maybe not very much flow, that's also another trigger. So that's an interesting thing that I've learned about calerpa. Now it's not someone's opinion, it's not somebody's idea from a forum, it is an actual research paper that was done. Uh, I guess, yes it was on a different species of calerpa, so how applicable is it to the ones that I keep? Who knows? But I think it's interesting, maybe rather than make up stuff, rather than rely on myths and legends to work out our problems in our reef tanks, we should see what the scientists are researching and try and emulate their findings.